doing today than some of our normal stuff because we are actually doing our slowest workout that we've ever done. Slow, not necessarily meaning easy, but we're working into a lot of mobility centric stuff today. So it'll be a little different than our normal bouncing around. So you might even be able to do some of it while you're being Mr. Mom. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw the Instagram on so I can explain this to them as well and we can get started. All right. Cool. So All right. Here Enjoy. We go. I'll be watching. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We could use a Mr. Mom at our house too if you want to come by. You know, you're always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Happy Friday, gang. Good to have everyone here. Uh, I'm excited about our workout today. This is some of my personal favorite stuff. Um, I took a mobility training about a year and a half ago now where we spent two days learning about joints, joints, and more joints, how to take care of our joints, how to strengthen our joints, um, all that stuff. And it's really, really important to take care of our joints. Um, as people get older, more and more we're seeing joint issues, knees, shoulders, hips, all that. So today's workout is the perfect counterbalance to a lot of the strength stuff we do. It does not mean it's easy, it's just really different. So we're going to go ahead and work from the top of the body down. You'll recognize a fair amount of this stuff because we've done it in our workouts before. Uh, I kind of sprinkle some secret mobility stuff in there. Today, we're just doing purely mobility and flexibility. So bands are on, cycles are on. Today, we're letting go of any notion of needing to gain strength. We've done a ton of that this week. You will get stronger by doing this work if you do it slowly enough, um, but that's not the goal. Today, it's just to open everything up and loosen everything up. So starting with the neck, we've done these before. Make fists, bring the shoulders down away from the ears. And we're gonna take eight circles each direction and I'm gonna walk us through the first one. So I drop my chin into my chest. I take right ear to right shoulder. Now get as much range of motion as you can here. Drag the back of the head along the back. And as you come back through center, drop left ear to left shoulder and chin into chest. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give us a little bit of time. Take about seven more, just working through it really slowly. And if your seven reps looks more like six, you're going so slow, that's great, that's fine. Good. Now engage your core as you do this. We're gonna get a good core workout today to keep the body really stable. And if you're feeling a little bit of stickiness in your neck, that's okay. Work through it as much as you can, as long as it's not super painful. Okay. Let's take one more. And start to come back through center. All right, let's work the other direction. Let's start together. Chin into chest. Make fists. Pull your shoulders down. Left ear to left shoulder. Get a big stretch here. Drag the back of the head along the back. Right ear to right shoulder. And chin into chest. Now take seven more, working through it. Maybe observing that one side is a little bit tighter than the other, normal stuff. Let's see if we can slow it down even more. Nice. Give me three more. And after your next one, we'll meet with the head stack on top of the spine. Ooh, good. Give it a rock side to side. Good. Drop right ear to right shoulder. Keep pulling that shoulder down and away. 
Come back through center, left ear to left shoulder. And come back through center. All right, we've done the neck. Now let's start to work into the shoulders. So we've got three different things we're doing here. The first one is a straight arm shoulder rotation. So we're gonna move through this for 30 seconds actively, and then we're gonna take four different holds where we work into it together. So find your right palm, start to rotate it up to the sky. Find your left hand, start to rotate down. So my arms are rotating in opposite directions. For our first 30 seconds, just keep moving them side to side. Imagine you're wringing out a washcloth and see if you can twist a little bit more each time. Now these should be really intense after a little bit of doing them. And we should be trying to keep our fingers in line with our shoulders the whole time. Good. And to allow the blood to pool, let's actually drop the fingers down about two inches. There we go. Nice. Keep bringing them out. Last 10 seconds, then we're going to work into it and hold. In five, four, three, two. Bring the arms out one direction. Hold it and squeeze, 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 squeeze. Use your core, everything you've got. Six, five, four, three, two. Rotate the opposite direction. Hold and squeeze. Reach the fingers away from the shoulders. Grow taller. Six, five, four, three, Two, two more sets. Rotate and squeeze. Get it out. Yes. Six, five, four, three, two. Last one. Ring out that washcloth. Squeeze it out. Woo. Six, five, four, three, and two. Relax the arms. Give the shoulders a shrug. Now, that should be really starting to get intense. If it's not, you can probably squeeze out more range of motion by engaging your core and your glutes. All right, that was our first shoulder exercise. Our next one, similar concept, but we're taking the arms into a cactus or a scarecrow position. So first 30 seconds, find your right hand, start to drop it down. Find your left hand, press it back behind you. We're going side to side. Okay, so working through that range. My shoulders are already tired. This is strengthening and giving love to our joint. Nice. And the cool thing about mobility is when we make gains with mobility, we increase our range of motion. We actually get to keep those gains for longer than when we make gains with flexibility, we strengthen our muscles. We lengthen our muscles. So it's harder up front, but it pays off longer term. Good. Five, four, Three, two, find one direction, press, squeeze, and hold. Give me six, five, more, four, three, two, opposite direction, switch it up, press, squeeze, belly in, grow taller, six, five, four, three, two, two more. Make sure the bend is not in the wrist, it's the shoulders rotating. Yes, six, five, four, three, Two, last one, give me six, five, more, four, three, two, and rest. Whew. Move them around. All right. We have one more shoulder exercise to do. Good job, guys. Arms should be getting nice and tired. Take your left arm across the body. And I'm going to come down to the, to, over to my side so you can see me do this properly. Find the fingertips of your right hand, leading with the thumb, reach all the way up. Now, notice how my arm is pitched forward. I want you to do your best to pull your arm in line with your ear, keeping the bend out of the elbow. Good, reach up with your fingertips. This is shoulder extension. Rotate pinky finger back, and without bending, twisting, or moving, make a big circle all the way back behind you. Good, leading with the thumb, reach up. Pull that arm in line with the ear, straighten it out, reach the fingertips up. Rotate, pull it all the way back, make as big a circle as you can. Oh, we have four more. All the way up, pull it back, rotate back and around. And I'll give you the frontal view. As you're doing this, your body's really gonna wanna shift and move 
Use the strength of your core and this arm to keep you stable. Last three. You can also always do these at a wall as well. Two. Ooh, it's hard to clear it. And last one. Reach up, pull the arm back, rotate, pull it all the way back and around. Nice. Give that right shoulder some love. And let's move into the other arm. Right arm across the body. We've got six. I'll come into the side profile so you can see. Take your left arm straight up. Now pull it back. Keep the bend out of the elbow. Reach the fingertips away from the body. Rotate pinky finger back. Bring it all the way around and through. Straight up, leading with the thumb. Pull the arm in line with the ear. Reach up. Pinky finger comes back all the way around. Good. Let's take four more. Making sure to get that arm straight and as far back as you can before you complete the circle. So I'm coming into full shoulder extension. Up, back, rotate, pull it through. Good. Last two. Up, back, rotate, and through. Last one. We'll take it together. Reach that arm up. Pause at the top. Pull it back. Reach the fingertips away from the ear. Rotate pinky finger back as slowly as you can. Make as big a circle as possible. Good job. Give that left shoulder some love. Move it around. Woo. Nice. Awesome. Good. Shrug them both out. All right. So we've worked on our neck. We've worked on our shoulders. Let's start to make our way down to work on our spine. So coming onto hands and knees, tabletop position, we're going to take what I call a segmented cat-cow. So in yoga, cat-cow, you essentially are doing this. Instead of just forcing the spine through the range, we're going to actively work through it. We've done this one once before. So the goal here is to articulate one vertebrae at a time for the move. So making sure shoulders are over wrists, hips over knees. Press the floor away from you with your hands to really activate the arms. Pull the navel in. Start to lift your tailbone up. And then one vertebrae at a time, start to come into that back bend as you pull the chest through the arms and hold it. Good. Pull the hands towards the knees and knees towards hands. Find even more length in the spine. And then keeping the arms active, start to tuck the tailbone. Pull up into that rounded spine one vertebrae at a time. Now, we're going to take a minute and just work through the range of motion, and then we're going to work into it at the top and bottom. So take a minute and actively work through it. Final extension, final flexion. Mm -hmm. And about 80% of American adults have lower back pain. So we need to take care of our spine, give it a lot of love, and allow it to move in different directions so that we can help prevent that. Good. Half done. Keep moving through it. Using your core strength to dome the upper back, really scoop the belly, and then pull the chest through the arms. Nice. Last 10. And in five, we'll meet with a flat spine. Three, two, and one. Now one more round together. Press the floor away from you. Start to lift your tailbone up. Drop your belly. Pull the chest through the arms. Hold it. Pulling hands towards knees, knees towards hands. Give me six, five, four, three, two. Tuck your tailbone under. One vertebrae at a time. Pull the belly in. Round the upper back. Press it up towards the sky. Push, push, push. Six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Good. You can go ahead. Press your butt back for a moment. Give the wrist just a couple circles. Also an important joint. So far, we've done neck. We've done shoulders. We've done spine. And we're going to continue to work into our spine. 
So the spine not only rounds and bends, we also move side to side, not only in athletic activities, but in things we do in our daily lives, like reaching across the counter to grab a cup of coffee, you know, normal things like that. So let's really work into our spinal mobility in a twisting motion. So my hands come back to the floor. I take my left hand behind my head. I wrap elbow to elbow underneath the body. And then I lift that elbow as high up as I can to the left. Elbow comes to elbow. And then I lift up, engaging my core to get as much range of motion as I can. 40 seconds. Work through it. And then we're going to take two holds at the top. Making sure your knees stay rigid into the floor. And you can really press into your bottom hand to help open up even more. Awesome. Good. Now see if you can slow it down. Squeeze out even more range of motion at the top. So what muscles do I need to squeeze? My glutes? My core? And things should be getting a little sore by now. It's hard work. Last 10 seconds. Good. Give me five, four, three, two. Wrap left elbow to meet right elbow. And then lift it up. Hold it. We've got seven. Six, push out more. Five, four, three, two. Elbow comes to elbow. Last one. Squeeze it out. Give me seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. All right. Let's work into the right side. Right hand behind the head. Elbow to elbow. Lift up. Squeeze out range to the right. 40 seconds. We're actively working through the range. And then we're going to take those two holds at the end. All right, let's check and see how we're doing. Nice tie. Oh, you guys, the speed is awesome. Everyone's taking it seriously and going nice and slow. Woo. Cool. Last 15 seconds and we'll work into it together. That bottom arm is working, too, to support the body. Mm -hmm. Give me five, four, three, two. Tap elbow to elbow. Lift that right elbow up and hold it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Elbow comes to elbow. Last one. Open it up. Squeeze and hold. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's move on to the wrist. And then we're going to combine our shoulder and our spinal mobility together for one final move. So to get into the wrist, we've done this one. Come onto the back of your left hand. And I want you to really make sure that the base of the wrist stays rooted into the floor. Spread those fingers nice and wide. Straighten out the arm as much as you can. And then without letting any of the five fingers lift or the back of your wrist, give me a little shift backwards and forwards. And if you can't get your arm fully straight here, I want you to work on that before you add that shifting movement. Also a nice stretch for the forearms. Because we do a lot of forearm strengthening. Good. Now, start to rock back a tiny bit. Hold it. See if you can get all five fingers off the floor. Hold them. Five, four, three, two, rest. Two more times. Get all five fingers off the floor without making a claw. Keep spreading them wider. Five, four, three, two, rest. Last one. Spread those fingers wide. Lift them up. Five, four, three, two, and rest. Ooh, roll that wrist around. It's going to feel really funky to put it on the floor. I promise. I do a lot of this stuff. It's okay. Okay? Unless you have a wrist issue, in which case, respect your body. Be careful. Work into the right hand. Back of the right hand comes down. Straighten out that arm as much as you can, shifting backwards and forwards. Start to release.
Good. Now take, spread those fingers super wide. Shift back a little bit. Keep extending the fingers away from each other. Pick them off the floor. Hold it. Five, four, three, two. Release. Two more times. Pick them up. Five, four. Keep pressing the wrist away from you. Three, two. Release. Last one. Keep that arm straight. Lift them up. Five, four, three, two, and rest. All right. Roll it out. So we have our final move here. And then we're going to take a shoulder stretch and keep grooving. So I call this the wave. We've worked on a variation of this this week. I start with my hips up and back in what's called downward facing dog and yoga. Just watch and then we'll do it together. So think about leading with your chest. You're going to dive through and come into a back bend. I lift my hips up and back. I bend the elbows, lower my chest, dive through into a back bend. And I lift my hips up and back. Now, totally fine to drop the knees, come up and down, okay? You can always drop the knees, come up and back and down. So let's play with this. We've got one minute and then we're going to stretch it out and we'll have the question of the week. So we all start now on facing dogs. Dive down the chest towards the mat. Come through, lift up. Pull the hips up and back. Awesome. Nice. Good. Let's see how we're doing. And ideally, your chest and your belly do not touch the ground at any point. We're working into the shoulder mobility and our spinal mobility to control our bodies enough here. Fantastic. Good. 20 more seconds. I call this the wave. <laughs> there we go. And last 10. See if you can do one more. Nice, Jim. Oh, amazing. Guys, five, four. Three, two, and rest. Now, take a look at the screen for at what I'm about to do because it's a little complicated, but I'll work through it with you. You take your right hand, slide it underneath the left arm, and then you take your left hand into the right hip crease. So I'm folding myself into a pretzel shape. So let's set up together. Slide the back of the right hand underneath your left arm, and then take your left hand into right hip crease. And once you're here, keep lifting your left shoulder up as you press the back of the right arm into the floor. So it's a combination back of the shoulder release and spinal twist. Good. Let's take three breaths here. And then go ahead and release the left hand. Press yourself back up through center. And let's work into the other side. So this time I'm sliding my left arm underneath my right. And I'm taking my right fingertip into my left hip crease. And as you're here, keep pressing into the back of the left arm and lifting the right shoulder up. And breathing. Three more. Good, press the right hand into the mat. Come back up through center. And let's swap out our bands, arms for legs, and have our question of the week. Good job. And if anyone has questions, thoughts, feedback, I know today is a lot different than what we normally do. So I'm always open to hearing what you think, if you like it or if you don't, I take no offense. Um, the question of the day is, the one thing keeping me sane during COVID is blank. Fill it in. The one thing keeping me sane during COVID. And I'll go ahead and go first because mine's really easy. The one thing keeping me sane during COVID is my job because my job is working out. <laughs> and I happen to be really lucky and that's kind of keeping me going. Johnson's Katsu. Amen to that. And kiteboarding. These is delicious food that the twins make. 
Lucky guy. Mary says, exercise. Heck yeah. I had a feeling knowing this group, for a number of us, it would be working out. <laughs> also hiking, a lot of hiking has been keeping me sane because it's something you can do outside. I have to get outside. I'm like a house plant. I need a lot of sun. All right. Let's go ahead and swap out those bands. We're going to start with some active flexibility, and then we'll come into more mobility. Mobility. Sophia says, swimming at the beach. George says, caught through rock climbing, and my kittens. Oh, my goodness. I want to meet those kittens or see pictures of them at some point. I have an 11-month-old kitten, and he's a handful. He gets to hide in my room during this. Otherwise, he'll try and lead the class himself. <laughs> All right. Those on Instagram, if you have answers to the question of the day, go ahead and toss them in the comments. Otherwise, we're going to switch out our bands and we'll come on up. It's funny. I talked to a lot of people during this time who have kind of gone one of two directions. I haven't met too many people in the middle. Uh, they've either been exercising a whole lot, uh, maybe even more so than before COVID during this time, or they've just kind of completely fallen off the bandwagon. So I'm glad to say we're part of the former and not the latter. So bands are on, cycles are on. Let's start to open up the backs of the legs. We do these ones quite a bit. Good morning. Hands to opposite shoulders. Keeping your legs straight or micro bend in your knees if you have really tight hamstrings. We're going to hinge forward and squeeze the glutes to press the hips forward to come back up. So we've got 40 seconds here, and then we're going to work into it. And I want you to take these really slow. Each time you fold into it, imagine you have a kitten on your back, and you want to keep your back flat so that kitten doesn't roll right off. Great. Nice, Diane. Good. And for those just joining on Instagram, we're having mobility and flexibility today to give ourselves a little break from all the strength training we've been doing this week. So jump on in. Good. Last 10. After this next one, go ahead and meet me in that hinge forward position and hold it. Start to reach your arms back behind you like a cape. Pull your shoulders down and your collarbones forward. Little pulses, leading with the belly button. Give me eight, seven, chest up, six, final extension, five, four, three, even lower, two, and one, come up slowly, press the hips forward, nice job. Now, we're gonna be doing some balance work while working our hips. If you wanna grab onto a wall, a chair, something, I'm totally okay with that because we're more focused on the hips today than we are on the balance, okay? So grab onto something if you need it. We're gonna start picking the right foot off the floor. Now, whether you're here or you're here, doesn't matter, okay? As long as your right foot's up. Let's practice opening and closing that leg. So my legs are neutral. I'm externally rotated. Neutral, externally rotated. So keep working through that range of motion. Same thing we did with our shoulders. Keep pressing that knee back more and more each time. And you can take your hands to your hips or one hand to your hips to make sure that your hips aren't moving. Good. Give me five, four. I'm actually going to hold on to something today. Three, two, press that leg open and hold it. Good. Without wiggling the body, drop that knee down and up. Down as far as you can and up. And as you drop it down, it's going to start to feel crampy and weird. That's what we want. Internal rotation external rotation don't let that right hip move six and up five mm -hmm. great last three get that knee down two 
press that knee down and hold it. Keep lifting your heel up. Press your knee down. Keep that right hip stable. Six, five, heel up. Four, three, two, and release. Good job. Circle it out. Standing leg getting some work as well. Let's work into the other side. So what we're doing here is this is my legs in neutral rotation. This is my legs in external rotation in the hip socket. When we start to work into that back knee, these are my legs in internal rotation. We never do this in our daily lives. But because our hips are a ball and socket joint, it's really important to move our legs through a wide range of motion so things don't get really sticky and tight because they're meant to move. That's why it's a ball and socket all around. So let's work into this other leg. Foot off the floor. You can hold on to something or not here. Doesn't matter. External rotation, neutral. External Neutral. Practice keeping your hips stable by engaging your core and your glutes. And after this, we have two more hip-centered things. Nice. Last four. Open that knee up even more. Three. Squeeze it right here. Two. Open and hold it. Now, drop that knee down and up. So find your inner thigh. Imagine it rolling down and up. Don't let the left hip move. Give me six, five, four. Feels really weird in here. Three, two. Drop that knee down and hold it. Rotate the inner thigh down more, 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 more. Keep pressing this hip down. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, release it. Rock side to side. All right. Let's keep grooving. We're making our way back down to hands and knees. Now, I want you to imagine that you have a sock, a bulb up sock in your left knee crease. Okay? So if you have that in there, you'd want to pull your heel in towards your butt and keep it there. Great. Now, 30 seconds, we're going to pull that heel in up towards the butt, open it out to the left, keep pulling your heel in, pull knee to elbow, knee to nose, and pull it back through. So essentially, without moving the rest of the body, and I don't want to see any bending in the elbow, keep them straight, I'm drawing a big circle with my left leg in my hip socket. Now let's move through it. 40 seconds per side. These should be slow. They should be intense. Try and get your knee all the way up to your elbow as you bring it up, around, and through. Now pull your heel in towards your butt even more. Good. Use your core to stabilize your body. Squeeze it out. Same thing we did with our shoulders. Control. Oh, awesome. Good. Pull that heel in even more. Don't lose that tension. Give me six, five, four, three, two, and rest the knee. Relax the heel. Now, before we do the other side, we're going to go the other way. So your hips might be sore tomorrow because we're building a lot of hip strength here. Pull your heel in towards your butt. It's not the goal, but it's what's happening, okay? Start to pull the left knee in towards your nose. Yes, we're still doing the left side. Dome the upper back. Pull that knee in even more. Now, open it out to the left. Bring it back and through center. So we're circling around the other direction. 40 seconds. My arms are strong. My core is strong. And oh my goodness, my hips are strong. Keep pulling that heel in. I'm going to check to see how everyone's doing. Good job. These are called CARS, Controlled Articular Joint Rotation Circle. So I'm drawing controlled circles with my joint to strengthen them. Nice, last 10. Check your right elbow. Is it bending or is it straight? See if you can do only one more for the remainder of time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Find your left leg. Kick it out to the left. Press your butt back towards your heels. Get a nice stretch. Good 
Go ahead. Come back up through center. Step the left knee in. And let's switch sides. I'm rolling around just so you can see me. So imagine you have a balled up sock, a weight, something in your right knee crease. Pull your heel in towards your butt. Arms are straight and strong. Spread the fingers wide. Press the floor away from you actively. Start to pull your right heel in towards your butt. Get your heel in even more. Open it out to the right. Pull that knee up, through, and back. 40 seconds, go in one direction. Even if you only do five, six reps in this whole time, you are actively lifting, squeezing, resisting the whole time. I'm happy. Good. Everyone check your left elbow. Mm -hmm. Good. Heel in even more. Imagine you're moving your leg through honey. Nice. Last 15 seconds. See if you can do only two more in this time. Get your heel in. Contract. There we go. Six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Set the knee down, release the heel, rock your hips side to side. Now I've got one more direction. And then we're going to take the work we just did with our hips and link it together for a little bit more powerful move. Not more powerful, just different. It's all powerful, okay? So right heel in towards butt. Go on the upper back, pull your knee into your nose, take it out to the right, circle it back and around. 40 seconds, this time going the other direction. Good, keep it up. Nice step. Good, everyone check your left elbow. Nice tie. Oh, gang, Sophia and Sydney look good. Awesome. George, I just see your foot going up and down, and I like it. <laughs> All right. Last 10. Good. Give me one more. Five, four, three, two, and rest. Extend your right leg out to the right. Pull your butt back towards your heel. Take the stretch. Get the big stretch all through your adductor, your inner right thigh. All right, we have one more exercise on our hands. Then we're gonna come up for a standing one. Okay, shift the weight forward. So we're gonna come into what I call Spider-Man knee hovers. So what this looks like, we're doing 30 seconds per side. I step back into plank. I pull my right knee towards my right elbow. I pull it to my left elbow, right elbow, Left elbow, I'm working side to side, getting my knee up towards the elbow, okay? You can always also do this on one knee, right elbow, left elbow, right elbow, left elbow. But I really want you to focus on getting the knee all the way up towards your elbow because that's using this outer hip strength that we've been building and our core strength which we've been working on all day too. So go ahead and step back into plank position, 30 seconds, here we go. Right knee, right elbow, left elbow. Right elbow, left elbow. See if you can get your right knee all the way up to your tricep. Up, tap, up, tap. Yes, it's so hard. Woo! There we go. Last 10. Give me five, four, three, two, and step it back. Drop the knees, pull your butt back to your heels, quick rest. Whew. That was long. All right, let's do the second side. Shift forward. Make your way into plank, this time working the left leg. Left knee, left elbow, right elbow. Left elbow, right elbow. 30 seconds, we're rolling. We're using our hips. We're using our core. Great. 
Top done. Nice. Keep using your core. Get that left knee up to your left tricep. Give me six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Everyone, come on up to stand. Grab a sip of water. All right. So we've been doing a lot of hip stuff. We've been giving them a lot of love. Now we're going to do our last standing exercise of the day. And then we have one exercise on our back and then we'll stretch it all out. So this is the hardest thing we're going to do today. I step my feet wide. I bend over into my left leg, drop my butt down, kick my leg over, around, push back up. Okay, so we did this last week and we're building on this again because we did a lot of stuff for the hips. I drop my butt down, kick it over, back, and press up to stand. If you need to use your hands, use your hands, right? Even if it looks like this, you sink down, you drop your hands down, and you press yourself back up, I'm okay with that, okay? But try the variation of the exercise just because why not, okay? 40 seconds, we're going side to side. Three, two, one. Bend into the left knee, drop your butt down. If you want from here, kick up, kick back, set the foot down, bring it back up through. Over to the other side, drop it down. Kick up and around, root the foot down and push yourself back through. I have a harder time on that side. So keep working through it. Good. Awesome, last 15 seconds. Woo, there we go. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Hands on hips, circle them out. Other way. All right, we're going to do that one more time. And then we're going to do the roll to sit stand. And then we're going to take our bands off. So 40 more seconds. Give it one more go. Three, two, and one. I drop my butt down. Kick that leg up. Back around. Press on up. We come down. Over. Kick. Back up through center. I know it's hard. I know it's bizarre. You can always just work into getting lower and lower side to side, okay? That's fine. <laughs> Good. Now, if you're on the floor and you're doing it, try doing it without your hands if you can. Ooh, good tie. Good. Last four. Three, two, and one. All right, last thing we're doing today, which we also worked on last week, is the roll to sit or roll to stand. So I come down, I roll back, I either roll up, get my butt off the floor, or I come all the way up to stand. So the full variation of this, I come down, I roll back, I roll up and stand, come back down, okay? Otherwise, just try and get your butt off the floor. I roll back, I roll up, my butt's off the floor. If you need to use your hands, use your hands. That's fine, okay? And my feet are slightly wider than my hips, so I'm in like a squat position. So think about that, because we've been working these guys a lot today. So we've got one minute of this, last exercise of the day. Let's go for it. I roll back, I roll up, I either stand or sit, come back down. Good. Awesome. If you want an extra challenge, try it on one leg. <laughs> Woo, good. 30 more seconds. 
<laughs> so great. Nice job, Zoom. Nice job, Instagram. See if you can get all the way up to CN. Why not try it? Oh, my goodness. Awesome. Last 10. We'll meet seated in five, four, three, two, and one. Everybody, go ahead and pop your bands off. Good job. All right. We will take our stretches, bands, bands today. A little bit of rhyming. So come into a wide-legged seat. Nice big V. If you live in a really tight body and this does not feel good, you can only pop a pillow under your butt or take a little bend in your knees. Hands across the chest. Keeping the spine flat, I want you to hinge forward and come back up. We'll rotate to the side so you can see. Hinge forward and come up. And even if your hinge is like this, that's fine. Work into what you've got. Okay, so you've got 30 seconds here. And if you can't sit in this position without your spine rounding out, practice sitting up and releasing. Up and releasing. So whichever you're doing, whatever's going on, we can work into it. Great. Had a nice mobility workout. Now we popped up our bands for the final stretch. Good, last two. For this next one, hinge and hold it. Imagine you have a cape behind you, reach your arms back, little pulses, drop the belly down. Give me six, five, four, three, two, and one. Come on up to sit, take the soles of your feet together. Now we have two things that we're gonna do on each side. First things first, take right hand to right knee, press it away from the body, press it down. And you can take your back hand behind you wherever feels good for support. Okay, so we're pressing that right leg down. Now, to open up the hip even more, I want you to press your knee up into your hand, but resist it. So press your arm down, press your knee up, 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 push, 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 push. Give me seven, six, five, four, three, two, release. One more, hand to knee. Press your knee up while you push the knee down. Good, resist, 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 squeeze it out. Eight, seven, six, more, five, four, three, two, and release. Let's switch sides, first things first. Press that knee down. So we'll answer this question later, but are my legs in neutral? external or internal rotation in the hip sockets here? We'll discuss after. Think about what your answer is in your head. Okay, now press the knee up into your hand. Press up, 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 eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, rest. Last one, press up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest, nice job. Let's make our way out of it by coming up to stand. Whoo, clasp those hands, my favorite upper body stretch. Pull the shoulders back, straighten out the arms, give me little pulses without moving the spine. Up, up, yes, eight, seven, six, Five, grow taller, chest up. Three, two, one. Bend the knees, dive forward and fold. Keep lifting your arms up and off the body, pulling your fist down towards the floor. Shake your head, yes, that was awesome work. I know it was slow, I know it was different, but you guys did great. Shake your head, no. We've had enough circles for the rest of the week. And then release your hands, let everything hang. Now, thinking about articulating one vertebrae at a time, I want you to roll up as slowly as you possibly can. Head, neck, and shoulders should come up last. Good. 
Reach your arms up. Take a breath in. Exhale, bring them down. One more time. Inhale, reach them up. Nice straight arms. Get a big stretch. Exhale, bring them down. Bring your hands together and give yourself a round. Great job. So when I'm sitting like this, are my legs in neutral, internal, or external rotation in my hip socket? Answers? I mean, you have like a 33% external. External, spot on. Thank you, Jim. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> have a I great can't. weekend, so guys. All right. You passed the All test. Right. Have a good weekend, everyone. I'll see you on Monday. Good job. Go Gators. Thank you. Awesome, everybody. Have a great weekend.